for this is going to occur, right? The bone is going to grow in length, it's going to grow in width, and then it's going to stop growing, right? If you stop, you know, some of you stopped growing basically when you were 16, right? You're just as you were as tall as you were, and then you're done, right? However, um, throughout your life, your bone is going to continue to reform. That is your spongy bone that you had four years ago is not the spongy bone that you have right now, right? Your spongy bone is continuously being replaced, your compact bone at a slower rate, right? So your bone, even though it's, about, it's gonna be the same length and around the same width, it's gonna be constantly replaced, right? And so this really gives us the first indication of the dynamic nature of bone here, right? So depending on the stress that your bones are facing the entire life, depending on injuries, depending on the use, right? Your bones are going to change over life because of this, what's called remodeling. When you're looking at all your features of the bone that you're learning, you're learning about spinous processes, ischial tuberosities, iliac crests, trochanters, all these projections that you see right here are muscle attachment points, right? So your glute muscles, right? Are being inserted onto your trochanters right here. And in fact, when you're first born, these are very, not very pronounced at all, right? They're just little nubs. As you start walking and you start using your glutes for upright walking, these start to grow and grow in response to that stress. And so here, this is kind of a pic cool picture here. This is the tendon that inserts into the periosteum. Remember, this is dense, regular connective tissue, the collagen fibers are inserting into the dense irregular tissue of the periosteum. But there's also fibers penetrating the bone. And so it's a little bump right here. Let's pretend this is your, your deltoid tuberosity right over here. And you're working out your delts a lot, right? And you're putting a lot of strain on those delts. So when you're doing that, you're putting a lot of pressure or uh, stress rather on that. And in response, that tendon is gonna pull, create uh, pulling force on that area right there and your bone is going to grow in response. So if you work out your delts a lot, right, your deltoid tuberosity is going to have a much more pronounced ridge like that, right? And this is because your bone is going to respond to that particular stress that you're normally placing on it. The other thing about bone, speaking of how dynamic it is, if you break a bone, Right? You can completely fracture your bone like this, and there's going to be a process that occurs that's going to repair that bone. Right? So you get a damage right here, blood fills in, all of a sudden blood vessels come in, it's replaced by this cartilage kind of model right here, and then it's going to replace by bone, and then over time it becomes actually stronger than it might have been in the first place. Right? So bone is a very dynamic tissue. Right? The other thing about bone changing is that here is a piece of healthy spongy bone right over here. This is like a micrograph of the inside of your bone. Remember those pores? These are the trabecula right here. Uh, the big pore is where all the bone marrow is. There's another condition where this ends up looking like this right here. So this is healthy bone. This is not healthy bone, right? You want to talk a little bit about what this is. All right, so first, just reminder, the last lecture, we talked about those three bone cell types, right? You had osteocytes. Those are the mature bone cells that were placed all around there in the, the lacuna, right? With their, uh, with their processes going through the caniculi. Then you had osteoblast in the periosteum and the endosteum making bone. And you had osteoclast that were reabsorbing bone, right? Taking away, they're eating away the bone to get the calcium, right? So in a normal everyday bone all the time, what's occurring is your osteoclasts are breaking down their bone, right? They're chewing it up, they're spitting out hydrochloric acid, breaking down the collagen with enzymes. And the whole purpose of this is to release minerals, right? You need calcium, this is where to get it. This is a storage in your, in your body to get calcium. All right, and so after you leave a little divot right here from that bone breaking down, osteoblasts move in and just build new bone, right? This is your normal everyday process 
right? This is constantly happening in your bone. That's why you replace your spongy bone every four years. Right? So this is a normal everyday activity right here. But this is important to remember because at some point, these will be working less than these. Right? So bone remodeling, this whole concept, I'm gonna put all these kind of concepts under the general heading of bone remodeling, right? Changing the overall shape, maybe changing the internal architecture, right? We'll see with the spongy bone or changing the mineral content, right? Your calcium and your, basically your bony matrix. Right, so this is bone remodeling. This is gonna be recurring throughout your entire life. So there's four factors that we're gonna talk about that are involved in this bone remodeling. All right, so the first one is the stress on the bone, the normal everyday activities that are going to be affecting how your bone experiences stress, right? So these compressive forces, this is your femur, which is, you know, uh, subject to the whole stress of the whole weight of your body pressing down on your bone. And if your bone started out with a little curvature, there's gonna be more stress on this side. And over time, what will happen, the bone will remodel itself to sort of reflect your normal everyday act stress, right? And it doesn't do that by just bending over that way. It does that by adding new bone on one side over here, and then we're basically removing it on the other side or rather not replacing it as it's constantly being broken down, right? This is a little like plant growth actually, right? Plants don't actually bend toward light, they kind of grow toward it. And that's what's occurring right here. New bone is added and then, and the end result is that your bone sort of is better able to withstand the normal everyday stress. So I don't watch tennis. I don't know how many people do. I don't know who these people are. What I know is that this guy is, let's say, left-handed, and this guy is right-handed. How do I know? Look at this guy's arms compared his, right? That's his left arm compared to his right arm. Here's this guy's right arm compared to his left arm right here. The thing about tennis players is they have the same genetics on both sides of their body, right? But they're, they have this really dimorphic sort of action because they're really using one side of the body. So they've done a lot of studies on these guys because, you know, you could take away genetics and environmental stuff and just look at the effects of stress. So they're using their, one of their arms, they have a dominant arm like that. And you could see, if you take an x-ray, you could see the dominant arm has a much denser bone, right? We know, we know muscle is gonna grow from use, right? That's an obvious thing that's happening, but the bone is also going to respond to that normal everyday activity. And during your normal course of your lifetime, right? Just the way your genetics are, you might have your a normal uh, shape of the neck of your femur in relation to the angle of the, of the rest of the shaft right here. This is the normal variation, but some people have a little less angle, uh, more or less angle. And then, so that's gonna place different stress on the femur right here, right? So there's different stresses on that bone. So if the load, the line of gravity, right, is gonna be placed right over here, there's gonna be a lot of compression on this side of the bone right here, on the medial side. And on the other side, there's gonna be a lot of tension. There's gonna be a lot of stretching on the other side, right? In the middle, that hollow area, the medullary cavity, right? It's gonna equal out, there's not gonna be any stress. So that's just to say, this is like the kind of stress that your bone might be facing, that sort of bilateral or different stress that's gonna be different regions of the bones is gonna be facing, right? And then, you know, so you're gonna have these compressional lines that is, stuff that is pressing down on the bone. You're gonna have different tension lines, stuff where it's pulling the bone. And what we'll find is that tra the trabecula, those struts and everything are gonna reflect the normal everyday stress. So when the bones do break down and remake themselves, they're gonna reflect that stress of everyday stress that you're going to have, right? And so now we're gonna go back to those bone cells, right? These are the osteocytes. Here's the lacuna. Those are those uh, processes that are coming off the osteocyte. They're going out throughout the bone matrix through those caniculi. 
they're talking to other osteocytes, they're communicating with them, right? So this is an important point too. Remember what we said, this was to get nutrition uh, so they can get oxygen and stuff because the stuff doesn't diffuse through the bony matrix. But they're also talking to each other. They're also sensing everything that's going along in the bone, right? So this is another red dot here. All right, so don't worry about this, but all those uh, osteocytes in your compact and spongy bone, right? When you're experiencing different loads on different regions of the body, that stress is going to be reflected in the fluid flow through those caniculi. So that's how those osteocytes detect it. And, you know, on one side of the bone, they're saying, hey, we're getting a lot of activity. On the other side of the bone, they're saying not. So they could tell, they can kind of direct the activity of these osteocyte, osteoclasts and osteoblasts to make more bone or maybe not make more bone, right? So that's how those osteocytes kind of detect the stress and direct like the remodeling of bone. That's just another fun fact. All right, so here's your takeaway from everything I just said right there, the trabecula is going to align with the stresses put on your bone by either grav normal everyday gravitational force or functional stress like that tennis player that your body experiences on a regular basis. Weightlifting, all that stuff, that's going to re be reflected in your bone composition. So that whole thing has to do with this balance, right, of osteoblast, uh, I'm sorry, osteoclast reabsorbing, breaking down bone, and then osteoblast making new bone. So in order to make new bone, you need calcium. In order to get calcium in your diet, you need vi vitamin D. So nutrition and calcium, these are two kind of sides of the same coid right here. When you have low blood calcium, and again, right here, these are the bullet points you wanna know. You don't have to know the details like parathyroid home or anything but you're, you detect that you have low calcium levels and you can do it, you can get calcium by reabsorbing more calcium or holding it, but you could also do it by breaking down bone to get the calcium. If you don't have enough calcium in your diet, if you don't, for have some reason you have problems with vitamin D, like you're not getting enough vitamin D, then you're gonna, just gonna have to break down more of your bone to get it, right? Which is not usually a good thing, right? So calcium, you need it in your diet, and hormone levels are going to kind of control how much calcium is in your diet. So rickets, when you have soft bones, your, cal your bones lack calcium, so that mineralized matrix is softer, um, is, a is due to lack of vitamin D or calcium and phosphate, right? So and the other vitamins uh, that are important is vitamin A and C, which are required for production of collagen. Collagen was the uh, other part of the matrix of bone. Bones are uh, more brittle, and also the connections, all the tendons are weaker. So you start to lose teeth, your bones break easier, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So that's scurvy was a result of vitamin C. Vitamin A and C required for production of collagen, and the hormones are regulating those calcium levels. All right, one more thing about hormones. Sex hormones, estrogen, testosterone, they also are, play a big part in bone growth, right? Especially during puberty. They stimulate bone growth during puberty. That's why you get that huge bone growth, uh, growth during, during puberty, right? So you don't have to know the details here, but the bottom line is that both estrogen and testosterone are doing something like promoting osteoblast activity of some, in some fashion, and they're decreasing osteoclast activity, right? In one form or another. So basically they're promoting bone growth by doing, by changing the balance of these two cell types right here. Okay, so that's the effect of those sex hormones on the blood. All right, so that's the sex hormones stimulating the bone growth during puberty. And one last thing, aging. Here we go. All right. Here, I'm going to share a little something personal with you here. I suffer from a condition. It's called chronological aging syndrome. It means that every day I get a little bit older and a little bit deterioration. 
is going on right here. So when you're growing, as you reach 50, about everything is progressing naturally. When I was in my 40s right there, people were regularly saying, hey, you're 35. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm 48. As soon as I hit 50, now I tell people I'm in my 60s, and they say, well, you look pretty good for your age. Right? So something happens around 50 where everything just turns basically to it just everything, everything in your body starts going to hell. It's not like that normal progression. There's a deep dive in everything in your body. So every part, every system, we're going to talk about the particular way that your body deteriorates as you get older. So this is just a normal part of aging. Uh, and it's and for bone stuff, it's all going to have to do with this, with the balance of the osteoclast and osteoblast activity. So this is aging in your skeletal system. This is our first installment with the triumph of the second law of thermodynamics. That is, everything tends toward disorder, right? Your body continuously takes a lot of energy to maintain its order. And finally, it says, all right, I give up. You, you win, universe, all right? And this is what happens to your skeletal system. So the particular uh, condition or disease we'll talk about is osteoporosis. Osteo meaning bone, porosis meaning it's getting more porous right here. And again, it's going to be an imbalance of that osteoblast, osteoclast activity. That is the bone is going to be broken down faster than the bone is going to form, right? Osteoclast activity more than osteoblast activity. This is mostly occurring in your spongy bone, right? On the inside of your bone. And in particular, it's affected in your vertebrae, remember, which is in your center of gravity right there, uh, particularly in your lumbar vertebrae, your hip bones, your femur, all those big weight bearing bones are gonna be particularly affected, right? Who gets it? Everybody, everybody gets it to some degree. It's much more prevalent in elderly women and especially after menopause, why after menopause? Estrogen, right? Your estrogen levels are severely decreased after menopause. Remember, estrogen is gonna promote bone growth by promoting in some way or another osteoblast activity or inhibiting osteoclast activity. There's a big genetic component, um, but in short, right? As you get older and especially for females after menopause, Right, this activity, the bone reabsorption is much greater than bone formation, right? So you get this porous bone. This is occurring in your weight bearing. It also occurs in your facial bones, right? That's why as people get older, you can start to see like their face change a little bit. Those facial bones start to get smoothed out and they start to get thinner, right? And so this, again, this is a red, sort of dot moment. This is not for your test, but for your life. This is the most important information you'll get from this class right here, that your bone loss after menopause, especially for females, right? You have this peak bone mass around, for females around 30 or 40. After that, right? Your bone mass is gonna decrease and decrease, right? So there's gonna be this decreasing bone mass with age. And so here's the bottom line here. Remember I said when you're working out, your body's feeling it, your osteocytes are feeling that exercise and they're gonna to respond to it. The more bone mass you have when you start 50, the more you'll have to lose. Okay, so what you wanna do is weight bearing exercise for the most part, right? Squats and deadlift are the biggest things. And I'll say this again during muscle, right? Because the same thing's going to happen. The more muscle you have, the more you'll have to lose. But the more bone growth, the thicker you are, the thicker your bones are, the more you'll have to lose because it's going to happen either way, right? You just want to prepare yourself. All right. So that's my public service announcement for today. Real quick. And again, uh, I'm not really going to ask you any of the details on that, but I want to stress the dynamic nature of bone right here, how it can repair itself, right? If you get this is a, a young person who repair very fast, but you, you uh, stick these together and they're gonna grow back stronger than before, right? When you break a bone, right? And again, this is gonna be all due to the normal activity of bone growth, right? The vital, the sort of um, dynamic nature of bone, the fact that there's osteocytes, osteoblasts, osteoclasts sort of constantly 
remaking bone and the fact that there's a lot of blood vessels in there to bring in everything it needs. So let's look at the contrast between when you have strains, right? Um, when you have damage to tendons, ligaments, and cartilage, right? Strains, tendons, and ligaments. When you strain, you get these little micro tears in your collagen fibers. Remember, dense, regular connective tissue was poorly vascularized. All right, so when you get these little tears, you get inflammation because um, there is some vascularization, but if you've ever had any kind of tendonitis or injuries to your tendons, they take a long time to repair, right? And so when you, and when they do repair, you often get this sort of fibrosis, right? This scarring of the tendon, right? So it's never quite as good, unlike the bone, it's never quite as good before you injured it. So your knee injuries, like when you damage the tendon, the ligaments surrounding there, you also might damage the menisci, which is cartilage. Over here, you get these uh, typical damages in your medial lateral menisci, your medial and lateral menisci, right? When we talk about cartilage, what else did cartilage have vascular in it? No, exactly, right? Unlike your bone, right? This is a picture of my thumb, my first metacarpal a little while ago. I broke it right here. They stuck a screw in right here and bone just grew over this thing, um, completely enclosing it. And the bone right here is as, good as, is as good as new. My arm, because I injured like some tendons or something like that in my arm, they took like three times as long to heal as this bone right here, right? So bone is very dynamic cartilage and tendons are less dynamic, right? So here's bone physiology. When something happens right here, you have all the bone cells that are normally doing this activity, breaking it down, making it, sensing it, bringing in new blood. With cartilage, it was very sort of inert. There was no blood vessels. You don't have those mechanisms to repair. You don't have blood vessels. So what often happens with breakage and cartilage is that it's replaced by sort of more like bone tissue or fibrous tissue and it's not the same as it was, right? So bone kind of totally repairs itself, cartilage and tendons, not so much, right? So all that fracture repair and normal bone remodeling is repairing on the dense vascularization of bone that your tendons and ligaments don't have, that your cartilage doesn't have, but that your bone has, as well as the normal remodeling elements.